Hi guys, uh, this is just going to be a really unplanned live stream. I'm uh, setting up the fishing gear for tomorrow for a competition. So I thought I would give you guys an opportunity to engage and basically ask any questions that you want. Um, now I've never done this before, so I don't really know what exactly it's going to look like. But if you've got any questions, just ask away basically. How's it going guys? Hi, hi Darren. Hi Ryan. Hi, da hi Dylan. Hi Blackfur. Hi Woodturner. Hi Daz. How would you fish a flat cam without the bung? Um, all depends on the time of year. If we take, so for example, perfectly today now. Today I fished on a North Wales fishery called Estelva and um, it was flat calm all day. Uh, Bung did work, but the only other thing that kind of showed any interest was just fishing a floating line with uh, two nymphs and a blob. And throughout the day, didn't really land much on that cast, but you were always getting interest. I think they were taking the blob on the point, if I'm honest. So flat calm, sunny day. If it's summer, you fish small. If it's winter, you fish the methods, you fish the flies that you would fish in winter, but you fish them without the bung. So there's nothing wrong with fishing a floating line with the same flies, and you just inch them back very slowly. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, um, the comp is just a lead comp up in um, instead of the fishery. It's run by um, Carl. So I thought I'd come up here. Try something different for a change. What do I think about um, building a leader compared to straight through tippet? I think that um, tippet leaders are good if you need them. They definitely help if you're fishing dries. But in terms of fishing any other method, I don't think you need a, uh, a tippet leader. Nine times out of ten, we fish straight through tippet most of the time. The only time I'll ever fish a tippet leader is if I'm fishing tries because you need that kind of delicate presentation really sorry I have to keep on clicking this to see who's speaking uh, flies I'm going to use tomorrow um, it's hard at the moment because today wasn't great uh, we had three fish on all three different flies so I think tonight I'm going to have a think about it and then try and work out in the morning based on whatever the conditions tell me. If it's bright and sunny, then you're going to fish slow. If we've got a wind, I might mix it up a little bit and fish something a bit faster, but we'll see. Uh, <sighs> cheers, Mark. Um, what is the red fly line your dad uses? The red fly line? Uh, the only fly line we've got which has a bit of red in it is one of those new sundry um, floating lines and it's basically the overhang marker um, we've only bought them about two weeks ago so at the moment the jewelry is still out on them but initially they are pretty good lines but i've heard that they're not the most um, durable of lines to fish with is it best to fish with two buzzers names with a blob blob being on the first drop or on the point um, i fish the blob on the point and um, it doesn't always work. It's just one of those things where, for example, today now, I haven't fished this ever much at all. This is only my second time up here. And to try and cover off two methods at the same time, you fish nymphs to see if the fish will take a nymph. But then by putting a blob on the point as opposed to, say, a black buzzer, then you're covering off two methods. So if there are any fresh fish in the area, that blob will draw them in and take them on that, basically. Uh, what are you setting up there? Um, at the moment, I don't even know. I'm just trying to tidy everything up. If you've, like most practice days are, it's just an absolute mess in this box right now. So I've got to strip all the leaders off of the lines I used today, narrow down the lines that I'm going to use. So I've got about seven lines here right now. I ideally want to drop it down to three if I can. And then 
just tie the old flies up basically, put them all in a box, back where they belong, take out what didn't work, take out what I think could work, and just uh, have that ready. Uh, Reese, yeah, there's the plan to do a video soon. Hi, Reese, just watched your video on bung fishing. Went to my local water station and got 10 on a trial bag. Nice one, James. Good to hear. Um, I fished lady before. We fished it in Scotland four years ago. We had a day up there when we were doing the Kingani International. Great fishery. A lot of big fish in there. Uh, trout fly fisherman. So I lived in Scotland for four years. So I fished Menteith plenty of times and I love Menteith. Rutland, I've only ever fished it once and we went down there for the fry feeders and we blanked. Bar drop in a, a brownie on a, on a minky. That was it we had all day. So um, it would definitely be Menteith. Menteith for us is a lot like um, Clawai Dog is for South Wales, uh, for Mid Wales, sorry. So um, no, definitely Menteith. Uh, Patrick, well, Reese, when fishing blobs with nymphs, is there a colour you would go to for like a pale colour? Colour. Oh. Sorry. Or do you bright? Or do you go bright to attract fish? I think it all depends, um, Patrick. Each day is different. You you try both. Whichever one sparks the most interest is the one that you fish with. You know, it, it goes back to what I've said in some of the other videos about your fish conditions. So, if you, for, for example, today now, bright sun, clear skies, to me that wouldn't say bright flies. But then one fish I caught on today was on a bright fly. It's fishing. You never, you never know exactly what's going to happen. And when you think you've sussed it, the fish have a wonderful way of telling you, no, you've got this wrong. So it's trial and error like anything is. Have you ever thought of selling the idea of a of a fly fishing show on mainstream TV? Um, I used to be an actor, so I'm a trained actor before. I, uh, I I now work in banking, so before that, that's what I used to do was work acting. But um, uh, there's there's people out there who do it better than I do. So you know, there's you've got Julian Lewis Jones, you've got Robson Green. So I'll leave it to them, they're professionals. Have you ever tried a palmad dancer? Have you ever tried a palmad damsel? It has worked well in all the still waters I go to and I've caught some cracking trout on it. I've never heard of the palmad damsel, what is it? Which tippet do I use? Um, have a look at my uh, What's In My Box video. All my tippets are there. I use Airflow, Fulling Mill, Stroft, uh, Rio, Vision. I use them all. I don't think there's um, one that's much better than the others. It tends to just be whatever I've got at hand to use. What's more important is just making sure you're fishing the right strengths with the right methods. So for example, on a bung, I'll never fish five or six pound leader. It's too light for me with the way I fish. So it doesn't matter what brand of tip that I use with a bung, as long as it's seven pound and above, whether it be seven, eight or higher, that's all I care about. Have you ever tried a Rio Gold fly around race? I think I'm going to buy one, the new Rio Gold Elite. My dad has one. So Jeremy's been using one for a while now, loves it. Can't speak highly of it, more highly of it. It's quite expensive, but you get what you pay for. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Graham. Sorry, this I'm not really not used to this. Uh, Blackfoot, what are your top favorite? What are my top favorite flat three flies? And what's your favorite dry fly? Uh, favorite dry fly, yellow owl. You can fish it in any lake across the UK at any time of year and it will catch fish. All you've got to do is fish the right size. If the fish aren't going to take it but they're looking up, you just need to scale it down to smaller. That's all there is to it. A top three flies, very hard. Um, a candy, I'm looking, at, I'm, looking at my, I'm looking at the flies I've used today now and what I've been using for the last month, which is my kind of worn box in front of me here. And there's a myriad of... Uh, Candy spots boobies with different variants, with different coloured eyes, different coloured tails. There are um, plenty of uh, Diabachs. I love a Diabach. Arguably one of the best nymphs ever invented. 
Um, I was going to do a nymph video for you guys on my favourite nymphs, but then I just realised it would be five Diaubach variants, so it wouldn't really make for a, a thoroughly entertaining video. Um, and then third fly, it's got to be a blob. I mean, it, if it's static, if it's fast, it doesn't really matter. It's just a banging fly. It'll catch you a lot of fish if you know how to fish it properly. Uh, Hi Joseph, thanks Willie. If there's no witchwood, I, I, I've never used a witchwood rod to be honest. Um, it's not something I've crossed paths with, but I've heard good things about them. Hi Reese, have you put a pic of the sea on Instagram? Where is that? Um, I'm actually up near Cricketh. That's where instead of a fishery is. If you've never been here before, um, I only heard about it this year and came up here about a month ago. And it's a nice little fishery. It's um if you're up from if you're around this area or just across the across the border, um by Chester in that area, it's worth a, a good two hour drive down here. It's about three hours away from me. Um so I'm just staying on the coast tonight, ready for our comp tomorrow. Excuse me. <clears throat> oh. It's a damsel with a red game hack instead of Fritz. Okay, so it's more of a subtle lure as opposed to one that's right in your face. What fly do you use in, in the early season? It depends on what water I'm on. That simple. If you fish somewhere like, I know you, uh, Joseph, you fish Cloedog quite a lot. A spot on colour on Cloedog early on is a booby that's made of coral, Fritz, and um, a yellow sunburst tail. Put it on a day three or a day five or a day seven as a blob or a booby, and you will catch a lot of fish on it. Um, smaller still waters, it really depends on the water. Some flies, a fly that works really well here in the Sedva. So, for example, last month, uh, two months ago now, six weeks ago now, when we were here, uh, we had a really good day. We had about 50 fish. And it was one of those days where anybody could have caught 50 fish. It wasn't It wasn't just because it was us or anything like that. But, but a watch suit was a really popular fly that day. Now you take a watch sit anywhere else, to other, any other lakes um, that I fished, and I can't catch a fish on it. And that's a perfect example of where one fly on one fishery is the bee's knees, and then you take that to another fishery and it's useless. Um, John Kelliger, what, when fishing a comp on your first peg, do you start on the bung or pull into us? It all depends. So, you know, for example, now today now would have been perfect if I'd sussed it out and, and walked into the and into the practice saying, right, tomorrow's three rods are going to be this. And for the first 10 minutes, I'm going to fish this. But the fact they only caught three fish on three different flies doesn't help in any way. Um, and three different methods as well doesn't help in any way in telling you, right, that is why I'm going to fish that. So it'll, it'll be a lot of gut instinct in the morning. What are the conditions telling you? If it's telling you, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're fishing in a howling wind and it's blowing right into your face, then casting is going to be a problem. So you want to make casting as easy for you as you can be. So you'll fish whatever method suits then. So if in that event, I'd go straight to the bung because I want to go cast it 10 yards out and fish in close and then work my way out. It's very hard to chuck an unweighted fly 30 yards in a headwind when you haven't got a, a, a bead on it or something like that. Um, sounds daft, but it gets tough at the server tomorrow. Chuck a yellow fab on a dive five and slow figure of eight back from peg seven to thirteen. Thank you very much. Let me see where that was. It's gone to there. Cheers, Adam. Thanks for that. Um, we'll see. Uh, thanks for thanks for the good luck. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, Josh. Uh, what's your best fishing memory to date? Oh, I don't even know to be honest. Um, the bass this year, the, the double finger bass I had this year was was up there as one of the most exciting uh, kind of twenty minutes fishing alone I've ever had. Um, in terms of uh, trout, the Kingani was special. So we didn't win in Kingani four years ago in the international, but um, fishing there, they had so many big fish in there. I think I landed a, a 17 pound brown in the competition and I was amazed I'd done that. And then, um, <laughs> but that wasn't the biggest fish caught there. So that just goes to show you how big the fish are in Kingenny. But I think um, 
most memories, most best um, times fishing is probably between with Jeremy. Uh, we get on so well when we're fishing together that just being up with him is um, is thoroughly enjoyable. If you only had one fly, if you only had one fly line to use and one team of flies, what would they be? Oh, thanks, Starsky. Um, floating line, because the floating line is more versatile than any other line that there is. Um, and what team of flies? So I can have three. Uh, okay, it would be a Diabach on the top, Buzzer in the middle, and a Damsel on the point. Uh, what is your favourite method to fish? I've been I've been more into buzzers and nymphs, but starting to get into bung fishing, and I've lost it. Uh, bung fishing with eggs and nuts. Um, dries are my favourite. I love fishing dries, um, and this year was a bit, bit annoying because obviously we went into a lockdown in March, and our places like Garn Food, dries is amazing from March through until about June when it gets too warm but we didn't get to fish any of that because of lockdown. So my favorite method is dries. What do you do when you're finding the fish gets tough? Do you stick to your fly choice or do you bring the changes and go through the box? Um, you do both. Some days, some days it, you have to keep on changing and, 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 and changing flies and changing methods until you find out what works. But there are some days where that's the, completely the wrong thing to do. You need to sit there and go, right, I've got an hour on this peg and there are maybe 15 fish in front of you or a roughly, you know, a small number of fish in front of you. Excuse me. Sorry, this getting to me a bit. Um, you've got a small number of fish in front of you. So you need to realise that actually chucking 25 flies at them in the space of an hour isn't the answer. They're only keyed into one fly, which might be the rhythm and the movement of a, of a weighted damsel. And you just need to sit there and go, right, I'll take a fish in the first two minutes, and then it's going to go quiet for 20 minutes, and then they're going to pick back up for maybe five minutes after that. And then you're only fishing for two fish off of that peg. It's having, and, that, and, and you don't always know that. That is That takes time and experience to learn it, and you will sometimes just get it wrong. You should have changed, because it, when it becomes evident is, is that, if, for example, I stuck with that now, I said I sat with the dams and I said, right, I'm going to have one fish beginning because I'm first on that peg. And then the fish will switch on roughly with the last five minutes of my peg and I'll take another one. OK, great. Happy that I took my two fish. And then the next person comes on and does a completely different method, which you would have thought about doing if you'd gone through that approach of cutting and cu cutting and changing all the time. And they take five fish. It's one of those things where it's just a split decision that you make when you're there, and um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, cheers, Joseph. Cheers, Andrew. Cheers, uh, UK Fly Fisher. Uh, do I ever give lessons at Gant Fruit? No, I don't. But if you need lessons, go and speak to Howell Morgan. He'll set you right. Uh, what is the best fish you've had there? Um, I think probably... The rainbow yard last year when i made a video on with uh it was the first day after so it was this year the first day after lockdown we went down there and uh, garn had had some big fish uh, in through the lockdown and they've been growing on so it was just rammed full of big fish and that day jerry had a massive fish and i had one a bit smaller um but it was just it was a great great day great fishing can't complain Hi Reese, how does your competition work? You deserve more subs for the content you produce. Thanks, Jamie. Um, the competition tomorrow, it's not fish to fip smoosh rules. It's um so that means you can fish, I think it means you can fish barb flies. It's an hour a peg, um, no limit on rods. Um so it's 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 more of a friendly league up here. So um so for me tomorrow, I'll I'll still fish fip smoosh because that's just what I'm used to at the moment. I might switch to adjustable bungs rather than st static bungs, but most of my flies are debarbed, um, debarbed, sorry, chemically barbless. Um, so yeah, so that's the format as I know it. It could change. I don't know enough yet until I see it tomorrow. If you are fishing the bung stat, how many minutes do you count before recasting? Um, it's a good question. So 
the Scots boys are well known for just leaving the bung there for ages. And the Scots boys catch more fish in the bung than most other teams. So there's a lesson to learn there about how long you should leave it there. I get impatient. I like to be moving, doing stuff all the time. So that's just how I fish. Um, but sometimes it just pays just to leave it there. And when I say leave it there, you could leave it there for 15, 20 minutes. Do you ever get up to Scotland to fish much? If you do, where would you like where do you where do you like to go? Um so I used to live in Scotland. I studied in Scotland in uni and then I lived there for about seven years. So I used to fish the Haley weekly, fish my teeth, fish Howard, um where do I used nice to fish? And that was pretty much it really. I know you've got a lot of East Coast fisheries and central belt fisheries, but um I used to fish Clyde a lot for Greyland. Um, but, but yeah, it was mainly, that's, that's why I kind of frequented my time when I was there. <clears throat> Here he's just starting with bung fishing. How many blogs, blobs or egg flies do you fish at a time? Two, three or four? Four? God, no, Ben. Um, one or two, no more than that. Alan, hi Reese. how are you, are you off out tomorrow? Yep, yeah, competition tomorrow, so the plan is to try and tidy everything up and get everything focused for tomorrow. Good luck tomorrow, Reese. Love you, Conda, keep it up. Cheers, Adam. Have you ever fished Lake Minty, Scotland? Yes, I have. I fished it. Um, well, right, I used to live in Scotland, as I said, it's the 10th million time this so far. Um, I lived there up until 2015. So I used to fish it every, every couple of weeks, basically. What's your personal best trout, Reese? Um, my personal best is probably the brownie up in Kingeni. We never weighed it because it was competition. It was just get the fish measured and then back straight to fishing. Uh, personal best brownie is that. Uh, I've had a sewing about £10 when I was younger, and then I've had a bass, so that's double figure bass. Those are probably my three big fish. Uh, Peter, no, I don't use tapered leaders. The only time I use them is for um, if I'm ever fishing price. And with that, I don't um, I don't make my own. No point. Fully mill to some great tapered leaders anyway. So I just buy one of them. Uh, and when they come out of the pack, they're a bit stiff. So what you do is uh, tear up the pack, but don't unravel it. They'll come in in a coil. Take a teacup. Boil the kettle, put some ket uh, put some water in the in the cup with a little bit of vinegar and leave it in there. Leave it in there for about ten minutes. What it'll do is it'll soften the leader slightly and make it a bit more supple. And then, if you imagine that this is my leader, you probably can't see this. Let me take my fly line. So, if you imagine that this is the fly line, this is your tip of leader, and this is the thick end, and this is the lightest end. What I tend to do is, if it's normally nine foot long, I think they are. I normally cut the finest three foot off because that finest three foot for still water trout is generally a bit too soft it'll, it'll snap quite quickly so i find that with let's say for example the six foot that's left i'll attach that to a floating line so that's the thick end here and then on the end of that i'll put a small little um micro ring and then i'll attach my own leader then which is probably three or four foot of stroft and then the dry and that's how I fish dries. <clears throat> Cheers, Gary. Cheers. Yeah, Brittany's having a good time, is she? Right then, so put that to one side for now. So I bought the, um, I got one of the hold of one of the Vision Stiller Maniacs. If you haven't used this rod before, try and get hold of one to use. They are great rods. Um, I was quite surprised that it, it's ideal. It's an ideal rod to fish worms and lures on. 
but today I played around a bit with um, nymphs on it and it's actually solid. It's quite stiff in the butt and then it's quite soft in the top, but it's not too soft that you think, right, the only thing I'm going to be able to do with this is fish dries or nymphs. I'd be comfortable, I think, I haven't tried it yet, but I'd be comfortable chucking a die seven on it. That's how, that's how strong I think the rod is. So, uh, what's the plan for next year's fishing trips and videos? God knows, to be honest, at the moment. Um, when I started this channel, this was just going to be a channel that did kind of cinematic videos of us fishing, or me and Jeremy fishing. Um, and I think what I've kind of realised over the last year, based on you guys, is that there's a lot more interest in how-tos, tutorials, talking about how how we do things, why we do things, what you can do, um, what you can do to improve yourself as an angler and stuff like that. So um, I think we're going to continue down that path. There will still be... Um, fishing videos so for example we looked at is a month ago um and we fish we filmed reese fisher jeremy too um it's just we haven't had a chance yet to i haven't had a chance to edit it yet it's going to take a little while to edit um but but yeah yeah i got jennifer Brittany, yeah now who else are we gonna get everybody what's the method to fish the old box and here's your hey what's the method to fish the old box and here's your Floating line and retrieve. For me, it's as static as possible. Rarely do I move my nymphs. Um, the only time I'll move them is roughly if. So, for example, if we're fishing here now, I've just cast a full line. First of all, first of all, thing you do is leave the flight sink. So that's normally a count of about 20 seconds. And then you're just going to steady, steady, slow retrieve. So, the same way you fish buzzers, effectively. The only thing, the only movement I might impart, and it doesn't always happen, it just depends on the day and how the fish are reacting, is that if you are straight line in the owls, and here's yours and nibs, and the fish are in the top, let's say, for example, the fish are in four foot of water, or they're at the four foot water column. Well, if you leave them as long as I do, they'll normally sink below them. So every now and then, all I do is just a quick one, two, three, four, five, and just stop. What that does is it brings the whole team of flies up, maybe into the water column or above the water column, and then you just stop and you just make sure you've got the line taut, but not too tight. And then what will happen is the flies will just fall back down, and that quite often is when you'll get some fish just slam it. So occasionally, just a small one, two, three, four, five, and then that's it. <clears throat> Is uh, Viva Fly any good? Yeah. Will I be doing any buzz videos of my buzzer partners? Yes, but not until March or April now because uh, I, I could do. I could do a video on them now, but we're not going to be fishing buzzers that often right now, to be honest. It's, it's more into winter now, so for me, that means a lot more of the bigger, nastier stuff. And particularly at some of the fisheries I go to, um, buzzers aren't the primary food at this time of year. There's literally no food about for the fish. But I will do one, similar to how we did the nymphs, we'll do teams of buzzers, but it'll probably be um, March or February or April or something like that. I'll give it a try, Trout by Fisherman. I mean, this is the first time I've done it. I haven't used any uh, any software for it. I think that's why I've got the Juicy Lips Tina in, in the chat right now, is that if you think you use the, the right software, it, it, it bans out the um, people like that. But um, but yeah, give it a try. You know, the lighting isn't great in here. You probably can't see actually what I'm doing, but, but it's a good opportunity for you to ask any questions, basically.
Uh, no, I don't make my own tape leaders. Just buy them. There's no point. Tape leaders come a long way now. Full in middle of the tape leaders that I use. They're fantastic. All I need to do is just do a little bit of... Um, re re just reduce them slightly, as I've already discussed in this live stream. Right, what I might do is, I might just stop this now because there's just so many bots in here right now. Um, and I might come back on if I can find the right software. But uh, if I don't, guys, thanks for this. If you want to see more of this, just drop me a comment in the most recent community post, which talks about um, the next uh, bung video, well, not bung video, the, the bung competition coming out. Appreciate you all tuning in. Um, and I might, I might catch you in 10 minutes. I might not. If I don't, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.